Go back to Galatians 4 16 for a second, brother. Read it again. The book of Galatians. Uh huh. Chapter 4, and verse 16. Okay. And my therefore become your enemy. Uh huh. Because I tell you the truth. Let me tell you something. How can someone be an enemy is when they go against the truth? You can be anti Christ when you go against Christ. What did Christ teach? Christ taught the commandments as it is written. He actually walked in it. So what people do, they tend to get upset, angry, emotional, because we're bringing it out. Now, like I said, today's topic is called, Yea, though I walk through the valley, the shadow of death. And we're going to find out what that's really talking about. Because the sad part about it is people have been mis misinformed. Um, like I said, this scripture has been used to for people who, <laughs> you know, oh, you know, I walk through the valley. They try to use it to quote that, and there is a cliche. They don't have to understand it. Um, and that's what we have to do here. Give the understanding, give the sense, make the sense of it. Okay. Let's go to the book of Isaiah, chapter 8, verse 20, and give me the revelation, chapter 19, verse 10. Um, as customary, we always go through this, y'all, because at the end of the day, brothers and sisters, um, you have to have Christ and the laws. You can't say I just have Christ and no laws. You just can't say I have the laws and no Christ. They have to be coupled together to have understanding. Precept must be upon precept. That's why we jump from book to book. So understand, so bear with us. If you're new, take your time, write your scriptures down, if, you know, and then you can always go back to the video and go back over it. And what we're going to do today is navigate through the scriptures. What was that? Isaiah chapter 8 and 20. Okay. Then we're going to the book of the Revelation, chapter 19, verse 10. It's customary. We have to do this constantly. Why? Because we want people to know that Christ is the law. And what we have to do as Israelites of the Bible, we have to follow the laws as Christ delivered them to us. How he how he followed the laws. Mm -hmm. If Christ did this, we do what Christ says to do. We follow the Most High through Christ because Christ is our Lord and Savior. He is our mediator. Mm -hmm. He's the one who we filter everything through. So we have to go through Christ. So this is powered by Christ. So if someone's angry at us, guess who, guess who else you're angry with? <laughs> you're angry with Christ. Right. Because he's the one that brings forth the truth. And what we do, we try to expound on it through the scriptures, what we do know. If we don't know something, we're going to put our hand over our mouths. Right. Okay, we're not going to play that game. Because we know teaching is a very important thing. It's something that people have to pay attention to. You can't take this lightly. Right. Okay, this ain't something we just, you know, we just come off the top of the head with. Okay, let's make that clear. Now, let's go to the book of Isaiah, chapter 8, verse 20, and give me the revelation of the 19, verse 10. Okay. Whoever has it first. All right, the book of <clears throat> the book of Isaiah, chapter 8 and verse 20. Okay. To the law. The Bible says to the law, right? Because the whole Bible is compassed with laws from Genesis to the Revelation. Okay. Read on, brother. And to the testimony. And to the testimony. It says to the law and to the testimony. What is the testimony, brother? The Revelation, chapter 19, verse 10. The book of Revelation, mm -hmm. chapter 19 and verse 10. Yes, sir. And I fell at his feet to worship him. Okay. And he said unto me, mm -hmm. See thou, do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God. Worship the Most High. The testimony of the Christ. Read on. For the testimony of Jesus uh -huh. is the spirit of prophecy. The testimony of Christ is the spirit of prophecy. If you don't have... The spirit of Christ upon you, you will not understand the Bible in its entirety. That's why a lot of people don't understand the scriptures because they don't have the spirit of Christ on them. You read this book like a novel, you think, Oh, I got it. No, you don't, because if you don't have precepts, you have no understanding. Now let's go back, let's go to the book of the Revelation, chapter. I mean, back to Isaiah 8 and 20. The book of Isaiah, chapter 8. And verse 20, uh -huh. to the law uh -huh. and to the testimony. The testimony of the Christ, the spirit of prophecy, read on. If they speak not according to this word. As it is written. As, if you don't speak according to this word, as it is written. Read on, brother. It is because mm -hmm. there is no light in them. There is no light. And what is the light according to the Bible? What is the precept for light? What is the definition of the light? The Proverbs, chapter 6, verse 23. Let's find out what the light is according to the Bible. The book of Proverbs, mm -hmm. chapter 6, and verse 23. Okay. For the commandment is a lamp. The commandment is a lamp because what does a lamp does? It helps you navigate through darkness. Mm -hmm. Though I walk through the valley and shadow of death, 
You have to have the light to walk through the darkness to navigate through the darkness. Read on, brother. For the commandment is a lamp. The commandment is a lamp because a lamp, you need a lamp to navigate through darkness. And in this context, the darkness is sin. So you need the laws in Christ to navigate through sin because if you don't have the laws with Christ, you won't have understanding. See, that's why some brothers don't understand. They think, that, oh, I just keep commandments. Okay, you keep commandments all day. The, 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 the fake Jews do that. Okay, you can keep laws all you want, but are they going to benefit you through Christ? Because Christ is the mediator, and Christ gives you the high understanding because it's still the through Christ. Understand that. The pure all armor. So, <laughs> like, where are you? Doing? I just, I just want to bring this out real quick because we we're talking about Christ and how we filter everything through it. Mm -hmm. So this is the book of Acts, uh -huh. chapter three. In verse 22. Okay. This is why we filter everything through Christ. Mm -hmm. For Moses truly said unto the fathers, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren, mm -hmm. like unto me. Mm -hmm. Him shall ye hear in all things, mm -hmm. whatsoever he shall say unto you. Mm -hmm. And it shall come to pass mm -hmm. that every soul which will not hear mm -hmm. that prophet mm -hmm. shall be destroyed from among the people. Let's find out where you got that from. Go to Deuteronomy 1818. <laughs> See, <laughs> this is why precept is built upon precept. Where is he getting that from? Because if it, if it never, if the Old Testament don't matter, why is he quoting Deuteronomy 1818? Because that's basically what he's quoting. And you remember that word prophet in Deuteronomy 1818. It's capitalized. So it ain't just one, it ain't just a simple prophet we're mm -hmm. talking about here. Okay? Matter of fact, you might as well start at verse 15. 15 yeah. Start at verse 15, bro. Deuteronomy 18, 15. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 18, and verse 15. Okay. The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren, like unto me. Unto him ye shall hearken. According to all that thou desirest of the Lord thy God in Horeb on the in the day of the assembly, saying, Let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, neither let me see. Because they don't want to hear it. See, here's the thing. This is how Israel, that's how we get to. I want to hear the Lord for myself. Um, oh, really? <laughs> you really want to hear the Lord? When the Lord really when the Lord showed his real true power. Oh no, guess what? No, let's go no Moses. You deal with him. Because we know he is too powerful. So yeah, you really want to see the Lord. If you think for one minute you want to stand for the Lord, think again. I'm Read on, bro. How many times have we been in camp with somebody that says, God gotta come down from heaven and talk to me? Let me tell you something. The, the, the last time the Lord came, the whole earth almost broke up. So you don't really want the Lord. Okay, no, you don't really want the Lord. Okay, believe that. Go ahead, brother. <laughs> Neither let me see this great fire anymore <laughs> that I die not. Mm. Verse 17 uh -huh. And the Lord said unto me, They have well spoken that which they have spoken. The Lord said, They, they, well, they you said, You know what? They spoke well because <laughs> you already want to see me, <laughs> you, and you spoke very well. Because if you really want, because if the Lord come back right now, this earth will get, get destroyed. That's how powerful people don't understand. Sin cannot stand before the Lord. You see how the wicked witch of the West melted when the water hit him? That's how you're going to melt and you stand before the Mosai with all that sin in you. I guess she got washed by the she, she got washed by the water. Word. Word. <laughs> Go ahead, brother. Verse 18. Uh huh. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, mm. like unto thee, mm -hmm. and will put my words in his mouth, mm. and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, mm. I will require it of him. You know something? Let's hear what Christ has to say about that. Remember, we filled in everything through Christ. Yeah. Go to St. John chapter 7, verse 16 for a second. He said the word I should speak, right? Mm -hmm. Because Christ only going, Christ is basically speaking what the Father commanded him to speak. So, like the brother just pulled and asked, 
322, mm -hmm. and then we want to go back, precept must be upon precept, to Deuteronomy 18.15 to prove the point the prophet is capitalized. So it ain't just a simple prophet here. Yeah. So now we're going to go to where we're going to go right now. John 7. John 7 and 16, right? Let's go to it. Let's hear what Christ has to say about that. The book of John, chapter 7 and verse 16. Mm -hmm. Jesus answered them uh -huh. and said, mm -hmm. my doctrine is not mine. Wait a minute. 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 Did the, the so-called Christians say, uh, well, you know, Jesus gave us something new. What did Christ say? The book of John, uh -huh. chapter 7, verse 16. Jesus answered them and said, my doctrine is not mine, mm. but his that sent me. Woo, wait a minute. His that sent me. So just like Deuteronomy 18 says, he put the word in his mouth. So the most high gives the word to Christ. Christ delivers it to us. Okay, we go on, bro. Verse 17. Uh -huh. If any man will do his will. Oh, wait a minute. If any man will do his will, what is his will? Because everybody want to say, I'm going to do the will of the Lord. <laughs> okay? So that's how we go to precept. See, that's how you gain understanding. And what is the doctrine, brother? What is the doctrine? That's what we're going to follow the doctrine is, too, because he says his doctrine is not his, but it's his that sent him. But let's find out according to the Holy Bible. What is his will? The book of Proverbs, chapter 4, and verse 2. Mm -hmm. For I give you good doctrine. Good doctrine. Forsake ye not my law. Listen, the doctrine of the laws in Christ. Now let's find what the will is. Let's find if it's still laws. Let's find out if it's still laws. Psalms 48, brother. The book of Psalms, chapter 40, and verse 8. Okay. I delight to do thy will. Oh my God. David saying this. He said, I delight to do thy will, my God. Read. Yea, thy law is within my heart. There you go. So the will of the most high is keep the laws filled through Christ. Simple. So you can't get around. And let's go back to what the Messiah says, brother. What did you say? The book of St. John, mm -hmm. chapter 7 and verse 16. Okay. Jesus answered them mm -hmm. and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. Mm -hmm. Verse 17. If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, mm -hmm. whether it be of God, whether it be of God, or whether I speak myself. Because remember something, Christ is what? Christ is an extension of the Most High. Right. So whatever he does, he's perfect. Right. So the Most High gives Christ the word, Christ carries it out to us. Mm -hmm. So, so it's because people don't understand it is a order. Right. You have the Most High, you have the Christ. You have the Israelite man, the Israelite woman, and the children. So what happens, the father gives the order to Christ. Christ gives the order to the prophets. He gives it to the men of Israel. The men of Israel gives it to his family to raise up the righteous seed. You see how beautiful that looks? You see how beautiful that is? You can't get around that, brothers and sisters. Okay? So he gives the laws. So he said, I give you the laws through my son. Do give it to Moses. Moses gives it to the forefathers. Then what happens now, we're raised up as the um the vessels of the most high. So he give, gives us the instruction as the Israelites. What we do, we go out, project it to our people, pray they repent. Because our job is just to hit you with the word. Your job is to repent and listen. Because whether you hear or whether you forbear, it makes up no difference. But the bottom line is, like the scripture says, if I warn the wicked and he turned from his wicked way, now mind you, if I warn the wicked, that tells us that tells us something. That's our job is watching. Okay. So anyway, let's get to the let's get to the point. I don't want to, you know, get a little bit off topic here. But anyway, let's go to the, the let's go to Proverbs chapter 14, verse 12, and give me Proverbs 8:36. Okay. Because we have to we have to prove a point here, y'all. See, the problem is with brothers and sisters, they think their ways are right in their minds. They think their ways are right. Without going to the scriptures, they think their ways are right. Let's see what the Bible has to say. The book of Proverbs, chapter 14, and verse 12. Okay. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man. Uh-huh. But the end thereof are the ways of death. You hear what the Bible says? The Bible says there is a way which seemeth right unto a man. But the end thereof are the ways of death. So... A lot of times in these different doctrines, 
and I want to say mainly Christianity, because it's the dominant religion of the world. You got Islam, you have Judaism, you have all the different religions. This is our religion, y'all. What we are in is the truth. The truth does what? Dictate our lives through Christ. If Christ walked a certain way, we have to walk like Christ. It's simple as that. There's no confusion in that. So we're not in the religion. So that's why we got to get it right. We have to make it clear with everybody. Okay? So in every wet man's ways, it seems right in his eye. Proverbs 836, brother. The book of Proverbs, chapter 8, and verse 36. Okay. But he that sinneth against me. When it says sinneth, what does sin mean? Sin is transgression of the law. Right. So if you sin up against the most high, what's gonna happen? Wrong he that but he that sinneth against me uh -huh. wrongeth his own soul. Mm -hmm. All they that hate me love death. You see that? All that that hate the Lord love death. How do you love the most high? Because if I hate him, I'm sinning. How how do, how, how, do how do I love the most high, brother? Give me a scripture. Give me a <laughs> Give me a scripture, brother. You, you don't you don't have it? Okay. How you love the most high? Oh, the oh, old oh, say, say, say it again, brother. First John chapter five. You got that, brother? Three. You got that? You got that, bro? First John five and three. Let's find out how you love them. Because if I hate the most high, right? How do I love them? Because 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 we're gonna go back to that. Go ahead, brother. You want first? Give me give me first John five and two. Whoever has first John five and three, just give it to us. And we're gonna go back to um Proverbs eight thirty six and have the cool point. The book of first John, chapter five and verse three. Say it on Proverbs. For this is the love of God. This is the love of God, right? Because if I say I love the Lord, and you hear people always say, Oh, I love the Lord, I love the Lord, I love the Lord, I love the Lord. <laughs> How you love the Lord? Read on. But this is the love of God. Uh huh. That we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not grievous. They're not hard to do, y'all. Because if I love the most high God, I'm not going to break his commandments. So when it says, when you go back to Proverbs 8:36, brother, what does it say? The book of Proverbs, chapter 8, verse 36. Okay. But he that sinneth against me. Mm. Wrong it his own soul. You let me tell you something. When you sin against the most high, you wrong your own soul because it's willful sin. Right. If I know the commandments that don't do this and I continue to do something, I am willfully sinning. Right. Now you can sin ignorantly, like we all was in this sin at one point, and sometimes we still have a sinful nature. Right. But if I know something's wrong, I continue to keep doing it. I have to I'm in the midst of sin because I am willfully sinning. Right. Read on, brother. What does it say? The book of Proverbs mm -hmm. in chapter 8 and verse 36. Okay. But he that sinneth against me mm -hmm. wrongeth his own soul. Mm -hmm. All they that hate me mm -hmm. love death. Now you hate the most high by telling people they don't have to keep commandments. Because how many pastors tell their people don't keep commandments? Do they all, huh? Right, brother? Mm -hmm. Go to, don't they all tell them that? Oh, yeah. Chris O'Donnell says keeping the Big Ten actually. Is that right? <laughs> is that right? Is that what Kreplo said? Yeah. Kreplo said that, right? Mm -hmm. That's one of the scriptures. See, see, we, we ain't gonna do y'all this type of rhetoric because you know all those pastors. They don't know. A lot of them don't even have a Bible in their hand. They walk around and they, you know they they breathe heavy and, and telling you stuff and telling you stories. You're not getting that here. No. This is not the, st the storytelling school. We're about teaching the truth as it's read. Okay? That's what you're going to do. You're going to get the heavy dose of scriptures here. <laughs> Believe that. Okay? Now, let's go to the book of Leviticus. Hold that. Give me Leviticus 22 and verse 26, brother. Because if, if the pastors are telling you this, right? They, 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 now, mind you, what we're supposed to do us as people of God is vet everything. Right? right? Now, even with us, we we what we say. We, we can, listen, man. We are not threatened by nobody's questions. You want to question the doctrine? Be my guest. Stand before the doctrine. Stand before it. Be on trial. The gavel's going to drop. You best believe that. Give me Ezekiel chapter twenty-two and verse twenty-six, brother. 
Huh? Uh, no, no, no. Give me, give me Ezekiel 22, 26 for a second. That's what I want. That's what I want. Sorry about that. The book of Ezekiel chapter 22 and verse 26. Mm -hmm. Her priests have violated my law. That's what I want. Mm -hmm. How, what, 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 what have they done? Her priests have violated my law. Now, don't you suppose to love the most high by keeping his commandments? Mm -hmm. So if Krakow tells you, we don't suppose to have no relation with the Big Ten. Wars of the pastors, right? Mm -hmm. Which means death and destruction. So if I'm a shepherd, mm -hmm. we'll get to the shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. <laughs> if I'm a shepherd, right, and I'm I'm looking after the flock, should we lead the flock in righteousness, mm -hmm. not in wickedness? So I have to tell them the difference between sin and righteousness, right? Read on, brother. <laughs> And have profaned mine holy things. What have they profaned? Mine holy things. Read on. They have put no difference. They put no difference because you don't know what's good and what's bad. Could they tell you, oh, you know what? On one end, they're trying to tell you the New Testament, it did away with the laws, the new covenant. Read on, but they say they put no difference between what? Between the holy uh -huh. and profane. They put no difference because they what have they done? They profane the holy things. We don't. Neither have they showed difference between the unclean. How can they if they don't keep laws? If I'm not keeping laws, I don't tell you the do's and don'ts. How do you know what's righteous? Trunk or tree, right? You just did a demonic holiday. The kids are confused. You want to sanctuary telling somebody, oh, it's good to have a jack o' lanterns. It's okay. It's okay for all saints' day. But at the end of the day, that's a lie. You can't find no one in scriptures where the God God told you to do that. So they put no difference between the what, brother? What do you say? Between the unclean and the clean. You don't know the difference because you're not taught laws. How you how do you know the difference between the clean and unclean if you don't understand laws? We don't, want, brother. And have hid their eyes from my Sabbath. They hid their eyes from the Sabbath telling you you don't have to keep it. Yeah, that's what they do. You don't have to keep the Sabbath day, brother. The Lord trumped it. But why did the Lord keep it? Why did Paul keep it? If it was trumped, because Paul came out to Christ, right? He was a follower of Christ. Christ was already crucified. So why is Paul keeping quiet? Why, I mean, why is Paul keeping commandments? Saturday after Saturday. Saturday after Saturday. You got John the Revelator all the way in 90 AD. Uh huh. Yeah. In the spirit on the Lord's Day. Uh huh. <laughs> on the Lord's Day. All the way in Revelation. Right. All the way in Revelation, right? Yeah, keeping the Sabbath. Right. But they but, but they're telling you, because here's the part, I hate to say this, y'all. We simple. Right. Mm -hmm. We're we children. Mm -hmm. The children of Israel. Right. And we have to be men of Israel. Start rising up and being men and realize, wait a minute, this don't compute. Right. This don't make sense. Why would the Lord give us majestic laws and tell us that this is how we get close to him? To send his son to say, you know what? We're gonna do away with it. It don't make sense. Right. That means why would the Lord, why would the Lord even waste his time giving us laws in the first place? Right. If he already knows he's gonna send his son to do away with the majestic laws, why would he waste his time giving us laws? You know, you should ask yourself that question. Ask yourself that question. Go. We saying, we saying Ezekiel again, brother. What does it say in Ezekiel? What does it say? And have hid their eyes from my Sabbath. Uh huh. And I am profaned among them. We are. Let me tell you something. They profane the Lord by lying on him, tell him he loves everybody. That's mm -hmm. not true. A lot of things people have. To, they're, they're gonna have to answer for. Right. Some of these people call themselves shepherds. <laughs> <laughs> let's find what the true shepherd is. Go to go to um let's go to let's go to um no 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 we ain't gonna go there yet. Go to Psalms 23. I want verse one first, then we we'll go there. Because <laughs> remember, they love the pull. This is a cliche. Right. We're gonna find out what he's really talking about though. Mm -hmm. So whoever has it, you know the book of Psalms. 
chapter 23 and verse 1. Mm -hmm. The Lord is my shepherd. The what? The Lord is my shepherd. Uh-huh. I shall not want. Stop right there. Then give me John 10, verse 11, and then go to 14, and give me Matthew 15, 24. Because what we're going to do, we're going to prove a point. The Lord is my shepherd. Let's find out how he is the shepherd. Let's find out. You want 11? Give me 10 and 11, and then go to 14 after that. The book of St. John, chapter 10, and verse 11. Remember, the Lord is my shepherd, right? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. I am the good shepherd. He is the what? I am the good shepherd. Okay. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Giveth his life for the sheep. Mm. Oh, really? <laughs> Who, let, me, let, me, let, me think, let me think about this for a minute. He says the good shepherd, he giveth his life for the sheep. Who are the sheep? Because they love to tell you in Christianity, or you know, they say, Oh, you know what? The Lord died for humanity. <laughs> the Lord died for everybody. Yeah. Any, <laughs> anybody that believes. Anybody that believes in the Lord. He died for you. Let me try to say it with a serious voice, too. But we're going to find what the Bible says. See, you can play these games all you want, but see, we ain't about games. We're about the truth here. So let's go to jump to verse 14, brother. What does it say? Uh, verse 14. The book of St. John, chapter 10, and verse 14. Mm -hmm. I am the good shepherd. He is the what? He says it again. Mm -hmm. he, I, he says it again. Read on. I am the good shepherd. Uh-huh. And know my sheep. He you knows what? And know my sheep. Go ahead, brother. And am known of mine. And am known. So he knows his sheep, right? Who is the sheep? See, that's why precept must be upon precept. Who is the sheep the good shepherd talking about? Yeah. The book of St. Matthew, mm -hmm. chapter 15, and verse 24. Mm -hmm. But he answered and said, mm -hmm. I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of, of Israel. Israel. So the sheep he's talking about, brothers and sisters, what does he say again in John? Let's make sure they understand he's the sheep. Because the sheep, we just found out with the precept that the sheep is the house of Israel. Mm -hmm. It's written red, so the Christ, the Messiah, the King of Israel, is speaking. Right. So we go back to John 10 and 11. What is the Messiah talking about? What did he say again, brother? The book of St. John, chapter 10 and verse 11. Uh huh. I am the good shepherd. He is the what? I am the good shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want, right? Mm -hmm. What? Now, who, read, who wrote that? Who wrote Psalm 23? David. David. So who is David talking about? Christ. Christ. He said that we're both by shepherd, right? I'm the good shepherd. I'm the good shepherd. So what did he say again, brother? What did he say? I'm the good shepherd. Uh-huh. The good shepherd giveth his life for, for the sheep. sheep. So he gave his life for Israel. Yeah, the, the lost sheep, that must be the world in John 3. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> David, David, gotta be Israelite, right? David, gotta be Israelite. Just the verse fourteen. When did he reiterated it again? The book of Saint John, chapter ten, and verse fourteen. Just in case you didn't hear, I am the good shepherd, mm. and know my sheep, and am known of mine. You best believe that. Mm. So he know his sheep. Mm. He's the good shepherd. Right. What's the, what does the good shepherd do? Hold that. Give me Ezekiel. Let's go to the Old Testament. Chapter 34, verse 23. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, brother. Book of Ezekiel. Mm -hmm. Chapter 34, and verse 23. Mm -hmm. And I will set up one shepherd. Oh, another shepherd. Is this the same shepherd? This Old Testament now. Mm -hmm. This is this is future tense, right? Mm -hmm. Go ahead, brother. Go ahead. And I will set up one shepherd mm -hmm. over them, and he shall feed them. Even my servant, David. Wait a minute. So he said, indeed, my servant David. What does David mean? Beloved. Beloved. Beloved right? Where, where did the Christ come to? David. David. Go ahead. <laughs> Even my servant David. Uh-huh. He shall feed them. Oh, feed his flock, the sheep. Mm -hmm. Right, read on. And he shall be their shepherd. Mm. Is that it? Uh, that's the end of verse 23. Uh-huh. Give me 24 too. Verse 24. Mm -hmm. And I, the Lord, will be their God. Oh, so now he's letting you know, I got the shepherd of Israel, the sheep, 
And I will be their what? Their God. Keep going, brother. And my servant David, uh -huh. a prince among them. What is, what, what, what is Christ? The Prince of Peace. Because mm -hmm. at this point, David's dead. Right. Right. So this is a future prophecy. Mm. Y'all keep thinking prophecy is not in the Old Testament. Think again. Mm. Wow. Mm. Go ahead, brother. And my servant David, uh -huh. a prince among them. Uh -huh. I, the Lord, uh -huh. have spoken it. I, the Lord, have spoken it. Go ahead. Verse 25. Uh -huh. And I will make them a covenant of peace. Oh, I'll make them a covenant of peace. The new covenant, the new agreement. Mm -hmm. But he's talking about Israel. He didn't say everybody because the good shepherd, they know who he's talking about. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, brother. And I will cause the evil beast to cease out of the land. The evil beast are men. Who's in the land today? <laughs> <laughs> Y'all think we playing? Give me um, give me um, give me Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes 3 and 18. He said the wild what? The wild beast, he's gonna do what? And I will cause the evil beast, the evil beast to cease out of the land. I will concede right now, we're in the land. Right. So who's on the land today? <laughs> this is future prophecy. They get see, listen, you can get upset with us all you want. We're gonna bring it out. Right. Okay. Let's find what the beast is talking about. The book of Ecclesiastes, mm -hmm. chapter 3 and verse 18. Right. I said in my heart uh -huh. concerning the estate mm. of the sons of men, mm. that God might manifest them and that they might see that they themselves are, are beasts. beasts. So this says evil beasts and sad men. So in this context, the evil men are over in Jerusalem and our land doing what? Defiling the land. Right. And therefore, the shepherd, that's why they don't want to believe in Christ over there. Because when the good shepherd comes, he ain't playing. He's going to clean house. Now, that's all we keep trying to tell, brother. You can't do this. Physically, you can't do it because we're not ruling up. So all this revolution talk, stop that nonsense, man. The revelation, the revolution's in Christ. Because he's going to set everything in order. When he comes back, he's going to make sure they pay what they did. Believe that. Mm -hmm. So people can get caught up in rhetoric all they want. And at the end of the day, the most high God is the Christ is the good shepherd. Give me first Peter chapter 5, verse 4, bro. Let's find out who how, let's find out in Peter. In this we're saying the New Testament. Give me Ezekiel. Give me Ezekiel. Matter of fact, we're going to go back to Psalms 24 after that. I mean 23. Okay. The book of First Peter, mm -hmm. chapter five and verse four. Right. And when the chief shepherd, <laughs> with the what? When the chief shepherd shall appear, uh -huh. ye shall receive a crown of glory mm. that fadeth not away. Mm. That's we. That's what we're fighting for, brothers and sisters. We are fighting for rulership. Right. The crown of glory represents rulership. Because you have a crown on your head, what do you become? A king. And what does a king do? A king, what does he do? He rules. So that means, what's going to happen again, brother? What did it say? What did it say? First Peter 5, 4, before we go off, and go, book, back to Psalms, go back to Psalms um, 23 again, brother. The book of First Peter, chapter 5 and verse 4. Okay. And when the chief shepherd shall appear. When he said the chief shepherd, he's the head shepherd. The chief shepherd, the Christ. The Messiah, he is the king. Read on. You shall receive a crown of glory mm. that fadeth not away. Eternal life, rulership. That's what we're fighting for, brothers and sisters. We're not fighting for a corner, a street corner. Okay? Mm. We don't give a damn about trying to fight to be equal with nobody. We're trying to rule with Christ with righteousness. That's what we're fighting for. See, y'all understand that we're fighting for a lot. The riches to live forever to rule the universe with Christ. That's what we're fighting for. Okay? But if we go back to Psalms 23, brother. Read it, read it, read verse 1 again. The book of Psalms, chapter 21 and verse 3. No, 23 and verse 1. The book of Psalms, mm -hmm. chapter 23 and verse 1. Yes. The Lord is my shepherd. Mm. I shall not want. Why should you not want? Because he's gonna provide for you. 
That's why you won't want because David understood that Christ was going to provide rulership for us if we say true, right. if we endure to the end. Exactly. Hold fast. Mm. Go ahead, brother. Verse 2. Uh -huh. He maketh thee to lie down and drink pasture. That's not what that's talking about. <laughs> Making me to lie down. Give me, give me um, Ezekiel 34, verse 11. You read down. You read down. It's not what the past is. See, this is, see that's how precept must be upon precept, y'all. Let's understand what he's talking about in the spirit. Go ahead, brother. Right, I mean, it's, it's, what we're about to read is easy to see that he only came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Mm -hmm. All right, the book of Ezekiel, chapter 34, and verse 11. Right. For thus saith the Lord God, mm. behold, I, even I, will both search my sheep and seek them out. Mm. As a shepherd seek about his flock mm -hmm. in the day that he is among his sheep that are scattered. Aren't we scattered today? The sheep is scattered all over the four corners of the earth. Okay? That's evidence to show that we the children, we are the true children of Israel. Mm -hmm. That's that that right there tells you because we're scattered among all nations. We don't, brother. So will I seek out my sheep mm. and will deliver them out of all the places where they have been scattered. That's what that's what we're saying. Deliver us from all the places where we've been scattered. That's where that's true salvation right there. That's the gospel. The gospel is to deliver us from our enemies. The good news. And that this is the answer for all those Christians that say. Why did Christ say go and preach it to all nations? Exactly. Because we're scattered in all nations. Exactly. Because that's why we keep trying to tell brothers. You got people, a lot of people speaking Spanish, speaking Creole, speaking English, Portuguese. They're speaking all these different languages, so we have to speak according to what they can understand. So if I'm going to somebody talking about some Hebrew all day, you're never going to get through to your people because they're scattered. Mm -hmm. And you don't have that gift of tongues, speaking known languages. That's all tongues is because Paul understood when Paul spoke three different languages, why? Because Israel was scattered among those nations. So we had to be able to communicate with the people because the, the language barrier is the biggest barrier for us right now. Right. You know? I mean, how, mm -hmm. No, I was just thinking that they looking mm -hmm. at that word nation. Right. And thinking actual, the different nations. You're speaking to the mic. They're looking at that word nation uh -huh. and thinking actual people mm -hmm. instead of going to these places mm -hmm. and receive the children of israel right talk to them right right and that's what we're talking about brothers and sisters see us we're a nation within a nation right make them think about that all right we're always trying to conform to the other nations all the time some things are so simple like paul himself he's from modern day turkey even he was scattered but he came back to Jerusalem mm -hmm. to learn. Mm -hmm. He had to, because he was a Jew. <laughs> Does that make sense? He was a Jew, so guess what? No, the Jews didn't hate Christ. Go ahead, brother. Because why would one Jew follow Christ? Especially Paul. Y'all always run to Paul, but I'm not understanding Paul at all. Run to him, oh, okay. But Jews hated Christ, but Paul is a Jew. Does that make sense? That doesn't make sense. Christ chose Paul to be an apostle. But Paul, at one time, Paul was ignorant and didn't know no better until he ran, ran into Damascus. But when he got changed over, transformed, that's when he became an apostle of Christ. That's what y'all don't understand. See, they don't understand that. But we, but we, were we finished on arm um, no. brother? And week? we'll deliver them out of all the places mm -hmm. where they have been scattered in the cloudy and dark day. And I will bring them out from the people and gather them from the countries and will bring them to their own land and feed them upon the mountains of Israel by the rivers and in all the inhabited places of the country. Go ahead. Verse 14. Mm -hmm. I will feed them in a good pasture. In a good what? In a good pasture, a good pasture. Go ahead. And upon the high mountains of Israel shall their fold be. 
their rulers shall <laughs> there shall they lie in a good fold mm -hmm. and in a back pasture mm -hmm. shall they feed upon the mountains of Israel. Give me Ezekiel 37 23. Let's find what fold he's talking about. Man, I'm telling y'all right now, we got we're not gonna go too deep with this class. I could go forever with this because I was gonna keep it simple. Okay. Give me Ezekiel 37, 23 for a second, brother. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 37. He said one fold, right? Mm -hmm. Let's find out what fold. Let's find out what we're talking about. Because you and the, you and the pastures, I would bring them in green pastures, right? Mm -hmm. Go ahead, brother. In verse 23. Mm -hmm. Let me start at 22. Let's start, let's start at 22, bro. Yeah, the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, and verse 22. Mm -hmm. And I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of israel oh don't it sound familiar what he just said in the other chapter and the mountain mount of israel only means rulership y'all that's all it means go ahead and one king shall be king to them all uh oh to them all right shall that's a future text mm -hmm. the good shepherd mm -hmm. go ahead and they shall be no more two nations we won't be two nations no more the southern kingdom and northern kingdom that's all it's talking about Still in with Israel. Go ahead. Neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms anymore at all. Mm. Neither shall they defile themselves anymore with their idols. Nope. Nor with their detestable things. Mm -hmm. Nor Such with Thanksgiving, Christmas, all the detestable, wicked things. We won't do it no more. See, at one point, y'all understand something, y'all. We're gonna at one point we're gonna come together. And, one, and we don't see eye to eye. Just believe that, brother. That's coming. Go ahead, brother. I just want to bring that point. Go ahead. I will save them out of all their dwelling places. Oh, did it say that? The same thing it said in Ezekiel 34. Mm -hmm. Same thing it said in Ezekiel 37. He gonna say, he's going to save you, which means, brothers, don't get your plane tickets. <laughs> okay? <laughs> For some of you naysayers, oh, well, man, I'm going to go ahead and leave. I'm going to flee. No, brother. That's a, the future prophecy. Is what's going to happen, but what, what does the prophecy say? I will save them out of all their dwelling places. Do you believe that, or you going to you going to be self will and do your own thing? Because mm -hmm. He's going to save us out of captivity. That's true salvation. That's that's the gospel. <laughs> Go ahead. That, the, that's the good news. If you endure to the end, the same shall be saved. Saved from what? From captivity from enemies. Just that simple. That's the good news. Go ahead, brother. Wherein they have sinned and will cleanse them. Woo! So shall they be my people, and I will be their God. That's the problem. How, how, how will we be cleansed? Give me <laughs> Psalms 119, verse 9. Mm. How will we be cleansed? I will cleanse them. So we are in green pastures. The good shepherd, the, he's coming to get us from all different, all the nations. People will get cleansed now. Mm -hmm. how, how are we going to get cleansed, brother? How are we going to get cleansed? Psalms chapter 119 and verse 9. That's not how we're going to get cleansed, brother. The book of Psalms, mm -hmm. chapter 119 and verse 9. Right. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? How are you going to cleanse your way, brother? Mm -hmm. How are you going to cleanse your way? Because you're going to get baptized in some dirty water. And you are already dirty. You're going to be dirty when you get up. Wet and dirty. Right. So you got to cleanse your spirit. You ain't talking about dip, dipping in some water. You don't want to change it. You don't want to change. What does it say, brother, again? Go ahead, Book of Psalms, chapter 119 and verse 9. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereunto. According to thy word. According to that word, that's how you must be cleansed. You go back to Ezekiel, brother, which way you stop that? What did it say again? The book of Ezekiel, chapter 27 and verse, uh, chapter 37 and verse 33. Mm -hmm. 23. Mm -hmm. So shall they be my, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Wherein they have sinned mm -hmm. and will cleanse them. Mm -hmm. So shall they be my people. And I will be their God. Mm -hmm. Verse 24. Mm -hmm. And David, my servant. Wait a minute, David, because remember, David did. See what you're talking about. The Christ, because Christ comes to the root of David, to the beloved. 
And who's the beloved son? The Christ. My beloved son, who I'm well pleased. Read on. And David, my servant, shall be king over them. Mm. And they all shall have. Wait, I, I, I want to say something. I don't want to cut you off. I'm going to say, I want to say this. Go back. If David's saying, The Lord is my shepherd, how is David going to be king? Because remember, David's saying, The Lord is my shepherd, right? right. So why the Lord said David should be certain, should be over my people? That's showing you talking about Christ, because Christ came through David. Mm -hmm. See, I'm trying to make people think for a minute. So you read Psalms 23, but make sure you know what you're talking about. Go ahead, but I ain't going to cut you off. Go ahead, I ain't going to throw you off. Go ahead. And they all shall have one shepherd. Mm. They shall also walk in my judgments and observe my statutes and do them. And do them. That's the key. And do them. Observe and do. So now we establish the pastor the green pastors, right? Mm -hmm. So go back to Psalms uh, 23 again, bro. Let's finish up. Well, uh, where, where do you stop at? Verse 2. Go back. Yeah, go ahead. Because now we understand the pastors to the old Israel, the green pastor. We read that. That's the precept. You want verse 2 again? Go to verse 2 again, brother. The book of Psalms, chapter 23 and verse 2. Mm -hmm. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Mm -hmm. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Mm -hmm. Verse 3. Now, the still waters. Give me St. John chapter 7 and verse 38. And give me the book of St. John chapter 4, verse 10. I want you to read all the way to 14. Because Christ says something, right? He said, Lead me by still waters, right? That's not what we're talking about. Okay? Because Christ says something. Matter of fact, read John, read John 10, read John 4 and 10 first, then go to St. John 7 and 30, 30, um, 38 and 39. I just want to prove a point. Four and ten? Yeah, four. Give me John four and ten. Read all the fourteen. Because we'll get the woman, the woman by the well. Okay? And then give me the John 7, 38, and 39. Lead me, he leading me by he leading me by still waters, right? Right. Okay. The book of St. John, chapter 4, and verse 10. Okay. Jesus answered and said unto her, right. If thou knewest the gift of God. Mm. And who it is that saith to thee, give me to drink, thou would have, have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. That's the water we're talking about. Go ahead. The woman saith unto him, sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From hence then hast thou that living water. Art thou greater than our father Jacob? That's how you know that this sister is an Israelite. They always want to try to say, oh, you know what? She's a Samaritan. No, she was living in Samaria. That's the citizen of Samaritan. That's still what our people are Israelites, brothers and sisters, who were in that land. She was just in a Gentile state of mind. But she knew she was an Israelite, though. She knew that. She said, art thou greater than our father Jacob? Why she didn't say Abraham? Because as you said, Abraham, then you can make a thing say she was a she was a different nation. She was an Israelite. That's who that sister was. Go ahead, brother. Which gave us the well and drank thereof himself mm -hmm. and his children and his cattle. Verse fourteen. Verse thirteen. Mm -hmm. Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water mm. shall thirst again. Mm -hmm. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him mm -hmm. shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him <laughs> shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Everlasting life. Now go to John 7, 38 and 39. Find what that word is. He's quite telling you the word he gives you the understanding. He gives you the word, the understanding, and him and himself. To gain an eternal life, right? He leading he leading me beside still waters. That's Psalm twenty three says. Go ahead, brother. The book of Saint John, chapter seven, uh -huh. verse thirty eight. Okay. He that believeth on me, mm -hmm. as the Scripture hath said, as the Scripture says. So as Christ was presented to us, not based on rhetoric, how he, even his image. Okay, as the Scripture said. 
like John and Rowe later described Christ, we go by that, not by what they push out here in these on quick these simple churches. Okay, go ahead, brother. He said, He that believes on me, if the scripture says, mm -hmm. uh -huh. out of his belly mm -hmm. shall flow rivers of living water. Because he gives you understanding. So, out of your belly, out of your mind, your spirit right. should do what? Should flow rivers of living water. So, there's still waters is that it's still living with Christ. And Paul, and excuse me, and David understood that. That's why David said what he said. Now, go back to Psalm 23 again, brother. Go yeah. back. Verse 139. Go through it now. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm sorry. Go through it now. I'm sorry. Verse 39. Mm -hmm. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him mm -hmm. should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, mm -hmm. because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Mm -hmm. And the Holy Ghost, for some of y'all don't know, it is the Spirit of Christ and the key of the commandments. So the Holy Ghost ain't some man with a doggone trench coat on with some glasses in the closet over there. Mm. <laughs> okay. <Right. laughs> some mystical creature that I was going to put out. I got to go catch the Holy Ghost like, like a doggone cold. But yeah, you eating shrimp and lobsters and stuff like that, but you got the Holy Ghost. Man. When you when, when you get the Holy Ghost, <laughs> you get understanding. <laughs> right. You, you don't get... Uh, uh, the latest dance moves. Right, 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 right. All of a sudden, you start doing the name that. No, you got the Holy Ghost, but you break dancing. You backslide. Come on, man. The Holy Ghost don't operate like that. You want to do the dog on ladies' dance. You want to do the name that. You want to do the same thing. Yeah, exactly. It's simple, man. Simple is all over. See, that's, that's the problem with our people. We're simple, and it's sad. So go back to Psalms 23, brother. So there's still water still that don't cry. You know, out of, out of his belly should flow rivers of living water. Christ is that well. So when we go to Christ, he gives us a higher understanding how to operate to get the kingdom, to, to be presentable to the Father. Right? Go ahead. You want verse 2 again? Yeah, go ahead, brother. Okay. The book of Psalms, chapter 23 and verse 2. Mm -hmm. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Mm -hmm. He leadeth me beside the still water. Mm -hmm. Verse 3. Uh -huh. He restored my soul. He does what? He restored my soul. Let's find out how we're going to get restored. Give me the book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 6. Mm -hmm. He restored my soul. And give me Acts 3 and 19. Mm -hmm. What is that? <laughs> 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 you have to restore, right? He, said, he restored my soul. Right. What does he mean to restore his soul? The David speaking in his spirit here. The book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 6. And we're gonna ask three and not three and nineteen after this. He restored my soul, right? Go ahead, brother. The book of Acts, chapter one and verse six. Okay. When they therefore were come together, right? They asked of him, saying, Now the now, now here's the thing. The disciples is talking to Christ. They asked him, saying something. And he want they're gonna ask a question. Mm -hmm. And I want you to ask yourself a question. Right. After he asked that question. <laughs> right. Go ahead, brother. Go ahead. The book of Acts, chapter 1 and verse 6. Mm -hmm. When they therefore were come together, mm -hmm. they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? Because they was the king of Israel, right? Mm -hmm. So the king was with David. So he said he was restored because David understood we were going to captivity. He knew that. Right? right? So why is it you're asking that question about restoring the kingdom of Israel? Why he didn't say restore the kingdom of Israel and the Gentiles? Oh, sir. I mean, yeah. Right. Because <laughs> whenever, whenever somebody was off, they said something off, Christ mm -hmm. corrected them. Right. That's what he came to do. Right. What did Christ say after that? What's that fire if he corrected them? Go ahead on, brother. Let's finish up. What did he say? Verse 7. Uh -huh. And he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father has put in his own power. Why he didn't correct and say, brothers, the Gentiles too. I came for everybody. I mean, he was clear. So when they, when they asked the question, why didn't Christ correct them? Well, you might be like, heaven down not red. <laughs> <laughs> you heard, I know the scripture. Why Christ said you err not on the scripture? He didn't even correct him because Christ understood 
the same way David understood, he had to restore Israel. Well, yeah. what Christ is saying is, <laughs> you don't know the time that it's going to be restored. Exactly. He says, I feel you don't even know the times right now because, you know, you don't know. You just have to live, live everything out. So you don't know. So that's what it's, let's go to Acts 3 and 19. Because it's, it's, it's showing you something. The book of Acts, mm -hmm. chapter 3 and verse 19. Uh -huh. Repent ye therefore and be converted, mm -hmm. that your sins may be blotted out. Mm -hmm. When the times of refreshing. Refreshing is when Christ comes back. That's when you get refreshed. Because he comes back, you're going to get refreshed, restored, again, restored. He's going to restore the kingdom back to Israel. We're going to get put back in our rightful place if we were repent in Israel. Okay, that's simple. That's what he said. So when, Paul, so when David says, he restored my soul, restoring Israel back to our rightful place and what? Rulership. Because David ruled for 40 years. His son ruled for 40 years. So why would he say he restored my soul? He's ruling. David's telling you future prophecy. He restored my soul because he's talking about Christ. He's letting us be letting it be known right there. Right? So when you read Psalms 23, think about that for a second. But go back to Psalms 23, brother. We ain't done. <laughs> so he restored my soul, right? Go ahead. Mm -hmm. The book of Psalms, mm -hmm. chapter 23, and verse 35. He restored my soul. Mm -hmm. He leaded me in the path of righteousness. The path of what? Righteousness. Uh-huh. For his name's sake. Now, what righteousness is he talking about? Give me Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verse 23, and give me the book of Baruch, chapter 4, verse 1, and 2. Because he does what? And right, he said, leading me into righteousness, right? Mm -hmm. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, and verse 25. 25. And give me the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, and verse 25. Mm -hmm. And it shall be our righteousness. It shall be. So he leads us into righteousness, right? Mm -hmm. He leads us, us into righteousness. So now, what does it say again, brother? If we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God as he have commanded us. So. The righteousness we're being led to are the laws, right? Now for the Psalms 119, verse 172. Righteousness, right? The book of Psalms, mm -hmm. chapter 119, and verse 172. Mm -hmm. My tongue shall speak of thy word, mm. for all thy commandments are righteousness. What? My tongue. Uh -huh. Shall speak of thy word. Uh -huh. For all thy commandments are righteous. All thy commandments are righteous. So go back to Psalm 23 again, brother. And where we're we'll sure about righteousness. The book of Psalms, uh -huh. chapter 23 and verse 3. Mm -hmm. He restored my soul. Mm. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness. And righteousness. So what makes you righteous, brothers and sisters, is keeping of the commandments. Okay, we just read that. Was that it? Uh, he he leaded me in the path to righteousness mm -hmm. for his name's sake. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, brother. Verse 4. Mm -hmm. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Let me find out how we walk through the valley of shadow of death. Give me Proverbs 21 16, brother. You know something? When we look at when we look at death, we look at death in its entirety, right? We always don't know a thing. What leads us down to down to death? Mm -hmm. Whoever has it, I'm ready. The book of Proverbs, chapter twenty-one and verse sixteen. Mm -hmm. The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding mm -hmm. shall remain in the congregation of the dead. You see that. The man that walketh in the congregation of the what? In the congregation of the dead. Mm, mm, mm. Go back to go back to go back to Proverbs 8:36, brother. We walk through the valley of shadow of death, right? Mm -hmm. 
that, that's, what, that, that's what David said. Mm -hmm. The book of Proverbs, chapter 8, <laughs> and verse 36. Mm -hmm. But he that sinneth against me mm -hmm. wrongeth his own soul. Mm -hmm. Although all they that hate me mm -hmm. love death. Because when you hate the most high, that's why he said the valley of the shadow of death, right? Because people have to understand something. When you're in the midst of sin, you are going to death. Give me, give me, give me um the book of the New Testament. Give me Romans 6 23, brother. And then give me Proverbs um 10 29. Because we're dealing with death. We walk in the valley of shadow of death, right? A dangerous place to fall. Yep. The book of Romans, chapter 6, and verse 23. Mm -hmm. For the wages of sin is death. You see the wages of sin? So when David says, this place that we know is always about sin. And the wages of sin are death. And that's the problem right there. We just follow the ways of the nation. Not understand the most high God gave us majestic laws to live by. He said, Do this, you live. You don't do that, you die. Right. How do I know that? Give me the book for Ruth 4 and 1. Because he tells you that. And then we go to 2nd Ezra. <laughs> After this. Go to Ruth 4 and 1. And then we go to 2nd Ezra. Chapter 1. I'm trying to go to dangerous place to follow. The book of Ruth. Chapter 4, mm -hmm. verse 1. Mm -hmm. This is the book of the commandment of God mm -hmm. and the law that endureth forever. Mm -hmm. All they that keep it shall come to life, mm -hmm. but such as leave it shall die. You see that? So the thing about it is if you leave off from the commandments, the valley of the shadow of death, mm -hmm. you're going to die. Yeah. That's what you trying to tell everybody. That's why our people are. We all every time we turn around, we always in the midst of death. Mm. Our lifestyle is always death all the time. Okay, that's the scary part about it, and we don't think none of it. We just go along with the flow. Mm. Go ahead, brother. Verse two. Turn thee, O Jacob. Turn thee, O Jacob, the progenitor of the twelve tribes of Israel. Read on and take hold of it. Uh huh. Walk. In the presence of the light thereof, mm -hmm. that thou may be illuminated. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Verse 3. Give not thy honor to another, mm -hmm. nor the things that are profitable mm -hmm. unto, the, unto the strange nation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That sounds like Matthew 7. You better believe it. <laughs> you best believe that. Um... <clears throat> Go to second Ezra seven for a second. I want to go there. I just want to show y'all something. It's a similitude. Okay, I'm not gonna get deep into it, but I want to prove a point. This place we live in, y'all, is a very dangerous place to fall. Okay, the commandments say do this. The world says do that. And what happens? We just go along with the flow. We don't never think about it before we do it. Because a lot of us are lost. And, we, and at one point, we were lost. And we have to start doing, brothers, to stop getting the scriptures, digesting the scriptures, and living it. Okay? Talking is one thing, and living it is another thing. But application is key. And when we go to second address, just bear with me with this. Okay? I'm not going to go too deep with it, but I'm just going to drop the surface with it. Okay? It's like, cause this, this chapter is real deep. Believe that when I tell you that. Okay, but that's just, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna skim over the, the few scriptures and I'm gonna prove some points. Go ahead, brother. Sure. Seven and one, and read on down. I just wanna prove a point. The book of Second Ezra, chapter seven and verse one. Mm -hmm. And when I had made an end of speaking these words, mm -hmm. there was sent unto me the angel, mm -hmm. which had been sent unto me the nights before. Uh -huh. And he said unto me, up Ezra, and hear the words that I am come to tell thee. Mm -hmm. And I said, speak on, my God. That shows you that the angels, who's speaking? <laughs> uh -huh. Go ahead. Then said he unto me, the sea is set in a wide place, mm -hmm. that it might be deep and great. Mm -hmm. But put the 
case, but put the case, the entrance, were narrow. Straight is the gate, broad is the way, right? Mm -hmm. Narrow, and it's showing you, it's going to show you here how difficult it is to get the kingdom. Because right. everybody think, oh, everybody get the kingdom. Okay, let's find out how hard, it's going to show you, it's going to show you how difficult it is. Go ahead. And okay. like a river. Mm -hmm. Who then could go into the sea to look upon it and to rule it? <laughs> go ahead. If he went not through the narrow, how could he come into the bro? Right. Because the narrow is very difficult. The straight gate. Right? Go ahead. Verse 6. Mm -hmm. There is also another thing. Mm. A city is built and mm -hmm. set upon a broad field. Mm -hmm. And it is full of all good things. All good things. You can guess what that is. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. The entrance thereof is narrow. Oh, is it? Wait a minute. Are you sure? Because they say everybody can get to this. The entrance of it is what? The entrance thereof is narrow mm -hmm. and is set in a dangerous place to fall. A dangerous place. That's where we're at right now. We are in a dangerous place. The valley of the shadow of death. This is a dangerous place to fall, brothers and sisters. Does death equate to sin? You best believe it. Well, that's all this place pushes. That's all they pumping. They pumping day in, day out in your eardrums. Sin, sin. Sin all the time. It's always about going into the most high. The most high said, Do this. They tell you, Oh, no, no, no. I'm trying to wait for you. No, come on. Let's just do this, brother. Go ahead, on. Go ahead, bro. And to set in a dangerous place to fall. Mm -hmm. Like as if there were a fire on the right hand mm -hmm. and on the left a deep water. Because you have to understand it's a similitude. It's like you have the water here and you're going to drown. Mm -hmm. You have the fire over here, you're going to get burnt up. Remember the elder world had the what? The flood. The coming destruction is going to be the what? It's going to be the coming. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. And one only path between them both, mm -hmm. even between the fire mm -hmm. and the water. Mm -hmm. So small. So small. Go ahead. That there could be but one man go there at once. That's how narrow this could be. You think everybody, you think mama, mama and them gonna go through that? You, can you gotta work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. <laughs> you gonna work out your own soul salvation. Only one person gonna be able to get in at one time. It's a similar tool, but it also shows you how difficult it is to get to the kingdom, y'all. Go ahead, I'm gonna keep reading though. Verse 9. Mm -hmm. If this city now were given unto a man for an inheritance. Inheritance. Mm -hmm. Inheritance. If inheritance. If, read. If he never shall pass the danger set before the it. valley of the shadow of death, mm -hmm. the danger set before it. Go ahead. How shall he receive this inheritance? How shall he receive the inheritance? He must. You got to be restored. Yeah. You got to be restored with the heart. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. Verse 10. Uh -huh. And I said, it is so, Lord. Mm -hmm. Then he said unto me. What do you say? Even so also is Israel's portion. Is whose portion? Israel. Will thou, will thou restore the king of Israel? Keep going. Verse 11. Because for their sake, who says? For their sake, go ahead. I made the world restore my soul. Give us back the rulership that was made for us from the beginning with the cross. Go ahead, brother. And when Adam transgressed my statue, because when Adam transgressed, transgress means what? Sinning. Mm -hmm. So when sin came in, what happened? Israel fell. All this Bible is about the, the, the rising, falling, and rising again in Israel. That's all the Bible is talking about. It's all about us. Sons of God. You get back to sons of God. That's what that's what Ezra is telling them. Go, I mean, that's what the, 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 the angel is telling Ezra. Go ahead on. Go ahead, go ahead. Keep going, brother. Then was decreed that now is done. Mm -hmm. Verse 12. Mm -hmm. Then were the entrances of this world made narrow mm -hmm. 
full of sorrow and travail. Ain't we going through that right now? Yes. Go ahead. They are but few and evil, <laughs> full of pearls and very painful. Ain't we going through that? We suffering pain. Black lives matter. And turn to the right. Even the brothers and sisters going through the um through the crowd veins over there, over there. Our Hispanic brothers and sisters, they catching hell. Yeah, this is this place is full of pain and full of perils. Keep going, brother. For the entrances of the elder world. Because at the beginning, the elder world before the flood, go ahead, were made wide and sure. Uh-huh. And brought immortal fruit. Because we're made to live forever. From the beginning. But because we transgress, we sin, sin, all it does is diminishes us. That's why we are at our lowest state right now, because we broke the commandments of God. That's why we're suffering. That's why David is telling you, yay, you are walking in the valley of shadow of death, brother. Now you got to earn it. You got to earn it now. You got to be tried. Mm -hmm. You got to go through the fire. Go through the fire, brother. You best believe that. For the pain and pain to go back. The Psalms 23, brother. We're gonna finish up a little bit. It's oh, it's a lot of stuff in there. I can keep going, but we don't we, we get like I said, this class could be brother. We know this class will be long. Go ahead. The book of Psalms, chapter 23, verse 4. Mm -hmm. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. We just proved the point. The shadow, the valley of shadow of death is dealing with the world, the world, the world of sin. Okay, this place here in America, you best believe that's the valley of shadow of death. You don't know that by now, you better ask somebody. Read the news, read the papers, go on YouTube. You can't see that, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, heck, Ray Charles can see that. <laughs> it's also <laughs> the value of the dry bones. Same exactly. Thing. Same thing. Can these dry bones live? I mean, we can go there too, but nah, not right now. <laughs> That's another topic. <laughs> can these dry bones live? You best believe that, y'all. That's another similitude of Israel, too, but for y'all who don't know. All right, but or what was about to say? No, no, go ahead now. Go back to Psalms 23. Go ahead, go ahead, keep reading. The book of Psalms, chapter 23, and verse 4. Uh huh. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, yes, sir. I will fear no evil. We won't fear no evil. Okay, give me the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 1, verse 7, brother. Hold that. We won't fear no evil because guess why? Why should I fear evil when I have I'm powered by Christ? Why? If I know I have the, the Lord right here, the Lord with me, why should I fear? Because the Lord don't give us the spirit of fear. Right. Second Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, brother. He said, what did, so David says what, brother? Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, uh -huh. I will fear no evil. I won't fear no evil, right? Why is it? Why won't he fear evil? The book of Second Timothy mm -hmm. chapter one and verse seven. Okay. For God have not given us the spirit of fear, mm. but of power mm. and of love mm. and of a sound mind. A sound mind. So you can't be unstable, man. You got to be stabilizing this truth. You can't be running all over the place. One minute you you know you believe this. One minute you believe that. Shaking to and fro. You can't be like that. So it says of a sound mind, because what fear does, fear makes you unstable. That's why he said, I'm not giving you the spirit of fear, a doubt. You see what I'm saying? So that's why we that's why he said I will fear no evil. That's why David said that. Finish up on Psalm 23, brother. The book of Psalms, chapter 23, and verse 4. Uh-huh. Yay. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, okay, I will fear no evil, mm. for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, mm -hmm. thy comfort. Me. Verse 5. Mm -hmm. Thou prepares a table. Uh oh. There we go. That's all I wanted. <laughs> there prepares a table before me. Which I say with such conviction. What is the table talking about? What table is he talking about? He's not prepared a table for what? Before me. Uh -huh, go ahead. In the presence of my enemies. Oh, that's what I wanted to. Before me in the presence of my enemies. <laughs> you, already know. you know what I'm going, Jay. There's two scriptures I want for tables. You know what I want. You give me both of them since you're right there. All right, the book of Isaiah, chapter 30 and 
in verse 8. Uh-huh. <laughs> now go, write it before them in a table <clears throat> and note it in a book that it may be for the time to come forever and ever. So the table is the scriptures. He said in the presence of our enemies because this Bible right here is in the presence of enemies. You got our enemy thinking it's about them. <laughs> so he go to um, Habakkuk 2 and 2, man. That's the, the precept must be upon precept. We got to find out what the table is again. Okay? Because the prophets don't want to call. Right. So one prophet say one thing, down the line you'll hear it again. That's how you know the Holy Ghost is upon the prophets. Because they all want to call. People don't think that because they, they don't understand Old Testament and New Testament. It, go, it comes hand in hand. Okay? Well, go ahead, brother. The book of Habakkuk, chapter 2, and verse 2. Uh -huh. And the Lord answered me and said, right. write the vision. Write the vision. So the Lord tell Habakkuk, write the vision. Write it on what? Because remember, everyone want to say the Bible is written by the white man. Right. <laughs> but why is the Lord telling him, do what? What did the Lord say? Write the vision. Write the vision. And make it plain upon table. Make it plain upon table. That is, brother? That he may run that readeth it. Mm. There you go. So the table David talking about is the scriptures. David is in the spirit when he's saying this. So he's telling you that, right? But he said in the present of his what? So who, 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 are, our, who are our enemy? <laughs> Nehemiah 5 and 9. <laughs> <laughs> he, tried, look, 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 he, he thought he knew where I was going, didn't he? <laughs> he, he trying to get all up. He, he trying to get all up, right? <laughs> that's all right, man. That's good, man. Yeah. Hey, that's cool. <laughs> the book of Nehemiah, chapter 5 and verse 9. You're right. Also, I said, uh -huh. it is not good that ye do, mm -hmm. that ye do. Are ye not to walk in the fear of our God mm -hmm. because of the reproach of the heathen? Our enemy. The reproach of the heathen, the heathen of the other nations. Yeah. For some of y'all who don't know, they are enemies. Not just the so-called white man. See, everybody think when we say enemy, we talk about the white man. It ain't about it. This ain't a, this is not a hate campaign, y'all. The Bible says the heathen are enemies. That's what the Bible says. So it's not just him, it's the Africans, the Arabs, the East Indians. All these nations have in captivity at one point. At one point, they have in captivity. So you have to ask yourself a fundamental question. Does friends put friends in captivity? No, sir. So the enemy put me in captivity, make me work his land, take all my goods, do what he does to me, rape me, do whatever. That's the enemy. It ain't a friend. Friends don't do that. So he tells you what he said in Nehemiah 5 and 9 again, brother, so people understand it. The book of Nehemiah, mm -hmm. chapter 5 and verse 9. Yes, sir. Also, I said, mm -hmm. it is not good that he do. Uh -huh. Ought he not to walk in the fear of our God mm -hmm. because of the reproach of the heathen? And reproach means ridicule, because every nation ridicules us. You don't think so? Go into these stores. Mm -hmm. five and, um, that was Nehemiah 5 and 9, brother. If you don't believe that you're approached, you're ridiculed by other nations, go to their stores. Mm -hmm. Go to their neighborhoods. They're going to look at you like you do. They're going to look at you. They're going to be bothering in the store. Especially the Moabites. Mm -hmm. They're the body. So mm -hmm. David, David is telling us, he's warning us through the Spirit, mm -hmm. that the Bible is going to be written in the presence of our enemies. That's why things are hard to be understood. Mm -hmm. In different languages, and that's why you know he tells you with stammering lips mm -hmm. and other tongue, should I speak to these people because they've understood that. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna be written in the presence of our enemies because they'd be writing a certain way. Why do you think Paul wrote a certain way? Right. Paul had to write, Paul had to write, <laughs> Paul had to be crafty because Paul knew if I if I write this way, it'll kill me. If I say God, <laughs> if I say the Lord hates the white man, right. This they'll never see this. Right. They'll destroy it. Right. Right. So, so we had to say, so we had to say Gentiles and mm -hmm. Jews. And he gotta say that in the presence of your enemies. So you gotta be classy. Wait a minute, I'm gonna, I'm gonna write this a certain way because if I write this this way, they don't right. understand what I'm doing. <laughs> Jacob have I love. Right. He saw how I hated it. So then they go and they turn around and say, Well, he is for the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
Not knowing that at one time we were Gentiles. Also say that Paul knew that the spirit of Christ was going to deal with the scriptures the same. Exactly. So he had to write it in the presence of our enemies. Right. So that's why when we read this Holy Bible, the only people that can understand it are the Israelites who repent in Israelites and the faith of Christ. They're the only ones, we're the only ones that's going to understand this in its entirety. When somebody else reads it, they're going to be like, you're talking about the Gentiles. This is for everybody. You remember when they moved to state property? Mm -hmm. Remember when Benny Siegel was locked up? <laughs> and he would call them and they'll be speaking the code. Right, 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 right. Just like he was like, oh, they're on the phone talking about a party. Uh -huh. But the people that know, know. It's the same way with the scriptures. Right. When he mm -hmm. brings forth the scriptures through the spirit of Christ. Mm -hmm. We can understand where in Christianity they say, see, to the Jew and to the Gentile. Mm -hmm. What Gentile are you? Uh, mm -hmm. Great point, though. Mm -hmm. That's an excellent point because that's what that's the same thing when when the different prophets. Mm -hmm. We're writing in different times, different parchments of the scriptures over time. They had to write a certain way because we was in captivity. Right. So they had to do the same thing. Right. When I'm in captivity, I can't clearly tell you <laughs> the real deal. If I do, they're going to kill me. Right. So I have to write in codes. Mm -hmm. So you have that spirit of Christ on you to understand. Mm -hmm. Same with Paul. Mm -hmm. Paul wrote a certain way. That's what we call Paul the snare writer. Because Paul wrote a certain way, man, if you didn't learn, you're going to go crazy. You gonna think what Paul's talking about everybody? No, he's not. Yeah. <laughs> All right, now go back to um Psalms, man. Let's finish up on Psalms, okay? I'm not trying to go too deep with Psalms. I can go a lot deeper, but let's go. We're gonna stay on the surface. Go ahead, brother. Yeah, go go um yeah go verse five again and go to verse six. I got that. The book of Psalms, mm -hmm. chapter twenty three, verse five. Right. Thou prepares a table before before me the scriptures the lord prepared the table before me by using the holy prophets of old and the prophets um after him to prepare the table the scriptures read on in the presence of my enemies the presence of our enemies the different captivity we we're in the presence of our enemies mm -hmm. so we had to prepare it the right way mm -hmm. i'm gonna do it in a way to make sure they don't understand what i'm talking about mm -hmm. but my people do who got the spirit of christ on them read on Thou anointest my head with oil. Uh huh. The understanding. Anointed my head with understanding. Mm -hmm. The anointing one, the Christ. That's the understanding of Christ. Go ahead. My cup runneth over. Oh, my cup runneth over. Go ahead. <laughs> Verse 6. Mm -hmm. Surely goodness mm -hmm. and mercy mm -hmm. shall follow me mm -hmm. all the days of my life. Mm -hmm. and, and, what, and what's going to happen? And I will dwell in the house of the Lord mm -hmm. forever. How are we going to dwell in the house of the Lord? How are we going to do that? Mm -hmm. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 6 and give me 2 Samuel chapter 7 and verse 23 and 24. Because we had to get restored, right? Mm -hmm. And I didn't really, I skipped over a few of those verses. I didn't want to explain them yet. But I want to go, I'm just going fast forwarding. Because he restored our soul and we're going to dwell in the house. His house, if we repent. Mm -hmm. Okay, as if we repent of Israelites. If we repent, we gotta keep saying it. If you repent, you will do what? You'll be restored back into our rightful place, right? So Deuteronomy 76 and 2 Samuel 7, verse 23 and 24. The book of, mm -hmm. the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7 and verse 6. Mm -hmm. For thou art in holy people. That's what he calls us. Unto the Lord thy God. Mm -hmm. The Lord thy God have chosen thee. To be a special people mm -hmm. unto himself mm -hmm. above all people that are upon the face of the earth of the earth so the lord don't change right how do we know that second samuel in 7 verse 23 and 24. he don't change right because we we were his people back then mm -hmm. and we're still going to be his people today who repent to keep the commandments of christ to be restored and, and reside in the house of the Lord, the tabernacles of the Lord forever. Right? Go ahead. The book of Second Samuel, mm -hmm. chapter 7 and verse 23. Revelation chapter 1, verse 23. And what nation in the earth is like thy people? What nation of the earth is like us? We're unique in so many ways. Okay? That's the question. Go ahead. Even like Israel. Indeed like Israel. Go ahead. Whom God went to redeem. For a people redeem, redeem. We have to be redeemed, don't we? Go ahead. Who God went to redeem for a people to himself. To himself. Not to everybody. To himself. 
word and to make him a name mm -hmm. and to do for your great things and the terrible excuse me and to do for you great things and terrible you better believe that all those all the times that we were delivered he did terrible things mm -hmm. To the other nations. <laughs> Great for us. Great for us. Terrible for them. Go ahead. And thy land mm -hmm. before thy people, mm -hmm. which thou redeemest from thee, from Egypt. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Which thou redeemest to thee from Egypt, mm -hmm. from the nations and their gods. And their gods? The nations and their gods? Because that's what they have. What's that? Verse 24 now? He said, verse 24. But thou hast confirmed to thyself mm -hmm. thy people. Israel to be a people unto thee. How long? Forever. How long? Forever. I thought the Lord didn't love Israel. Forever. Forever. So he would store up our souls to dwell in his tabernacles forever. The Revelation chapter 12, verse 10 and 11, brother. The book, <laughs> Revelations <laughs> chapter 12 and verse 10. Uh huh. And I heard a loud voice. I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now is come salvation. Now is come salvation. Go ahead. And strength mm -hmm. and the kingdom of our God uh -huh. and the power of his Christ. You know what that means? His Christ. What does it mean when he says his Christ? His anointed, the Israelites of his power, of his Christ. Go ahead. For the accuser of our brethren. The accuser of our brethren. We see that all the time. We're being accused constantly. Every time you turn on the news. Uh-huh. Is cast down. Mm -hmm. Which accused them before our God mm -hmm. day and night. Mm. And they overcame them by the blood of the Lamb. By the blood of who? Of the Lamb. Uh-huh. And by the word of their testimony. And they love not their lives unto the death mm. that's what we're doing we cannot love this life brother so you know we have to love we have to love the lord stand strong and believe mm. because this is the thing y'all we are that we're already in the valley of shadow of death and what we have to do as brothers and sisters in this truth especially is come out of the ways of wickedness okay and that's the problem right there because the promise is this, give me Revelation chapter 2, verse 26 and 27, and give me Revelation chapter 3, verse 12. The book of Revelation, chapter 2, and verse 26. Yeah, give me 26 and 27. Okay. The book of Revelation, chapter 2, and verse 26. Okay. And he that overcometh. If you overcome yourself, you overcome the ways of this world, the valley of the shadow of death. You have to overcome that, right? If, if you overcome, go ahead, brother. And he that overcome it, mm -hmm. and keep it my work. And you keep the works by going here doing this work, teaching, whatever you can do that's within the confines of the commandments. Mm -hmm. Right? Go ahead, brother. And keep it my work mm -hmm. until the end. Until the end, until either when Christ comes back or when you check out. Okay? Go ahead, brother. To him will I give power over the nation. Power over the what? Over the nation. I thought we hold a hand. So, because you get power, I mean, Christ gave you the crown. The good shepherd gives you the crown. Somebody ain't equal. Somebody ain't equal, right? Because <laughs> <laughs> that's a lie. Was that it, brother? Mm -hmm. Go ahead, brother. And verse 27. Mm -hmm. And he shall rule over them. Wait a minute. Did Christ, did the good shepherd say him give crowns? Because if I, if I have a crown, he's in a rulership. Right. <laughs> so, we're ruling over who? The nation. Aren't they ruling of us? The heathen. The heathen. Our enemy. Right. Right. So you can't get mad at that. what the Bible says. You can't get mad at that. Go ahead, brother. And he shall rule over them mm -hmm. with a with a rod of iron. And aren't they ruling over us with a rod of iron right now? They're not letting up on us. With a continual stroke. So continual stroke. They ain't playing no game with us. Heck, no, listen, listen, man. Anytime Trump says, He's gonna start shooting people that throwing rocks. Excuse me? Those people don't pose no threat like that. But they want to propagandalize things and put propaganda in your minds and make you think they are threat. Them people don't own no weapons like that. But it shows you they're ruling us with a rod of iron. And you know they do it too, because they can't own people over here. Exactly. So when somebody's throwing a rock, mm -hmm. 
<laughs> they don't care. They don't care. They have no regards of the of the old or the young. Mm. That's how they get down, brothers and sisters. See, see that's facts. So if that's controversial, shame on you. Because we're telling it like it is. Y'all don't like that? Oh well. We're about the truth. We're not, we're not doing no lies. Okay? Give me the Revelation chapter 3, verse 12, brother. Let me finish it up. Because you have to keep this in mind, y'all. This is what we're fighting for. We're fighting for rulership. We don't have we listen, we get tired of being trodden down and beat down. And I mean, shouldn't you get tired of that at some point in your life? Don't you want to be ruled in righteousness? You don't want to see, you know, people being shot down the streets unjustly. You don't want to see that stuff all the time. All that stuff is depressing. And maybe now you maybe not, not even want to watch the dog on news. Every time I turn around, oh, this person's brother got shot down because of that. This. this brother, oh, uh, he ain't paid his taxes. He's going to jail. I mean, come on, man. That's crazy. So give it to me, brother. The book, Revelation. Chapter 3 and verse 12. Him that overcometh mm -hmm. will I make a pillar in the temple of my God. Do you hear that? Him, here we go again. Him that overcometh. The same thing said in Revelation chapter 2. When you overcome, you have to overcome the valley of the shadow of death, man. Overcome yourself, overcome your own iniquities within you. Okay, go ahead. And he shall go no more out. Mm -hmm. And I will write upon him the name of my God. That's a reward. So you know, guess what, brothers? You don't have the name right now. All you have is a title. Okay, go ahead. And the name of the city of my God, mm. which is New Jerusalem. Wow, because old Jerusalem is looking bad right now. It's being trodden down right now. So it has to be renewed. Okay, because it has to be purged. Because the, the wickedness going on over there. Go ahead. Which cometh down out of heaven mm -hmm. from my God, mm -hmm. and I will write upon him my new name. There you go. I will write upon him my new name. That is a reward, y'all. You will have a new name, Lord's will. So that's what we're fighting for. Did you got something to say? Well, I was going to say you might as well prove it. Give me the scripture. All right, the book, the Revelation, chapter 2 <laughs> and verse 17. Mm -hmm. He that hath an ear, let him hear. That spiritual ear, let him hear. What the Spirit saith unto the church. Mm -hmm. To him that overcometh. Here we go again. Overcome. So, wait a minute. So, if you if it was done already, and you're supposed to be, because if God would tell you Christianity, it's done. You have to do no works. <laughs> yeah, Christ said it's Christ said it. So, that's the case. Why am I going to keep overcoming then? The Bible, this is the third time the Bible said him to overcome it. If, I, if it was no works, why do I have to keep overcoming? Because the works are keeping commandments, man. Because the commandments purge you of wickedness. You see what I'm saying? It purged you from wickedness. Okay? Go ahead, brother. Finish up. All right. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and will give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, saving he that receives it. All praises, brothers and sisters. That's a reward. Think about that, man. You're getting a new name, a new body. Mm. I, I mean, eternal life. I mean, new Jerusalem. Think about that. That's what we're fighting for. That's why we have to overcome the valley of the shadow of death. Because the same way it's in the second address, you gotta go through the you gotta go through a narrow passage. You know, we gotta work for it. Now at one time the elder world, it was easy because you know you already was given it. That's why the disciples said to restore the kingdom to Israel. Because they understood that in the beginning it was created for us. But because we fell. And we're disobedient, that's why we're not conditioned today. Okay? First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. Last last scripture. You think you're gonna be all day. All right, all you gotta do is this. You can't be far away. Sit on the couch and you take this. Right, 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 right. I'm just gonna play some mad and you know, I'm gonna work, go give me a couple, give me a pair of J's and I'm gonna be good. You know, what a 40. 
Right. The book of First Corinthians, uh, chapter six and verse nine. Mm -hmm. Know ye not that the unrighteousness shall not inherit the kingdom of God? If righteousness is keeping the commandments. What is unrighteousness? Mm. It should be unrighteousness, right? So he leaded me to the path of righteousness. Mm -hmm. You go back to Psalm twenty-three. So if unrighteous, if righteous is keeping the commandments, what is unrighteousness? Then? Go ahead, brother. Be not deceived. Don't be deceived. Cause they want to tell you, oh, you know, you good. Don't be deceived. Go ahead. Need the fornication. If you're in the midst of fornication, crime against marriage. Go ahead. Now, no adultery. Same thing, but you did with your marriage. Going against your marriage. Separating your marriage. Go ahead. No adultery. Mm -hmm. No effeminate. If you are homosexual, when you are going to snap your fingers and twitch and all that nonsense, okay. you are effeminate. Mm -hmm. Come out of that lifestyle because this is New Testament. Mm -hmm. He said, don't be deceived. Don't think, oh, just because I'm, you know, I'm good. No, you're not. Go ahead, brother. No, if users of themselves with mankind, they said a billion, being a lesbian, all that stuff falls on the abuse of themselves with mankind. Y'all have to understand something. This ain't a hate campaign on nobody. But that lifestyle, the most I hate. Mm. And if you don't repent, turn away from that sin, pray the most I take that spirit off you. The most I gonna destroy you. That ain't what just what the word says. Go ahead. Keep going. Verse, verse 10. Uh-huh. No thief. No thief. So if you're a thief, if you're a kleptomaniac, a klepto, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We extort money from people. Go ahead. <laughs> no covetousness. Because the covetousness is what? It's, it's really idolatry. Mm -hmm. Because what you're doing, you are making that thing an idol because it's a strong desire to want something that's not yours. Right. Go ahead. No drunkard. If you drinking and partying and being drunk, Go ahead. No revenue. Partying. Go ahead. No extortion. If you that's what they're doing with these churches. Extort money from people. Using the Bible, they extort money. Oh, brother, when a man grab God. <laughs> that's extortion. Because I know, listen, you know what? If I know the scriptures, right? And I extort money from people. Because what I'm doing is I'm, I'm I'm using the scriptures to get money out of them. Mm. That's what it is hell, man. Yeah. You should never do that. That extortion. Go ahead on, brother. No extortion mm -hmm. shall inherit the kingdom of God. Inherit again. That's the word inherit. Because you were already joined heir. Mm -hmm. Say so heir inherits something. If you're in an heir, how can you inherit? Right. You're not an heir. <laughs> we should we, we want to be heirs of Christ. Okay? If we keep the commandments. So it's just they say they should not do what? Inherit the kingdom of God. So that means if you in the midst of all that stuff we just named in the scriptures, you will not get the kingdom. No matter how many hallelujahs you sang, okay, how many <laughs> we don't care how many pot rooms in as you sell, you're not getting the kingdom. <laughs> you know. But anyway, brother, give me the book of Proverbs, chapter seven and verse one and two. And that's gonna be it after that. The book of Proverbs, chapter 7 and verse 1. Okay. My, my son. My son. Mm -hmm. Keep my words. Do what? Keep my words. Keep the words as it is written. As the Bible is, as the Bible is written. Go ahead. And lay up my commandments with thee. Lay up the commandments with thee. They instruct us through the valley of the shadow of death. Go ahead. Keep my commandments and live. You hear what the Bible says? Brothers and sisters. Keep my commandments and live. Go ahead, man. And my law as the apple of thine eye. That's the true apple that you must eat off of. <laughs> okay? And that's what we're saying, brothers and sisters. We have to keep commandments in the faith of Christ. Okay? That's the only way we get out of this captivity. So the valley is shadow of death. We get out of it through keeping these commandments in Christ. Simple as that. So the book of Acts, chapter 5, verse 29, brother. The book of Acts. Chapter 5 and verse 29. Okay. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, All right. We ought to obey God rather than men. And that's who we must obey, brothers and sisters. We must obey Christ, the most high, and the keeping the commandments. Um, does anyone have any questions? I want to make sure people are clear today's class. You are muted. Are they muted? <laughs> they probably are muted. <laughs> yeah. 
Does everyone have any questions pertaining to today's class? Was everyone clear? Okay, Second Samuel was chapter seven and verse twenty-three and twenty-four. No problem at all. Was everyone else good? Everyone good? All right, all right. Well, listen, everybody. Um, Most High Christ bless everybody. Um, we want to give the Most High Christ all the praise and glory. For allowing us even expound this word, okay. Um, I want to thank everybody for being on. Y'all stay strong, okay. In this valley of shadow of death, okay. It's a dangerous place to fall, y'all. And we gotta stay strong, strengthen ourselves. The joy of the Lord is our strength, okay. We got we got new moon coming up this um Wednesday, right? Wednesday on the seventh, okay. At, uh, at even, at even, okay. <laughs> at even, okay. At even. <laughs> Because we had some confusion this past week. It was crazy. Never thought you had to stretch that word. Never thought you had to stretch that word. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's on this Wednesday. You don't have a phone? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, we got food and everything. Yeah, Lord's will. Yeah, then we get ready for the feast dedication, which is December 1st. Mm. So get prepared for that. Everybody, you know, gear up, y'all. Um, have some passages you would enjoy. Yeah. This is the feast of the Lord. Hmm? Yeah. So y'all stay strong, man. Like I said before, most time praise bless everybody. Thank y'all for being on. Um, until next time, like I said, shalom. Most time praise bless everybody. Shalom. 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 Most time praise bless. All right. Shalom. Most time praise bless. All right.